Hi and welcome to this uh, video tutorial on how to set up your network uh, settings for your recorder. Uh, in this particular video I will be doing it in an NVR uh, so the menus might look a little different for a DVR but uh, the concept is the same and actually the menus might be pretty close so uh, you'll you'll see possibly different colors but n nothing major okay so um right now i'm in the network configuration page to get here uh you have to go to uh if you're if you're in the main window where you're viewing the video right click go to menu and then from there you want to go to where it says system configuration here uh you'll see the general tab and you know i'll stop here real quick here you can set your time and date and the ntp server so if you're connected to the internet having an ntp server can be very helpful to keep your uh your nvr or dvr synchronized uh in this case i'm using time.google.com ntp port one two three and the uh, interval is a uh, thousand four hundred and forty minutes which is about a day okay uh, and then you can set that there. All right. Once you do that, click apply. The next part we want to do is go down here to network. Okay. So uh, in this network tab, depending on the recorder you have, you might see different options under the working mode. Uh, net fault tolerance, just so you know, is in case, you know, maybe you have dual NIC or multiple NIC. So uh, if you have multiple network interface cards, the net fault tolerance will only use one. Uh, you can connect them all to the switch, but it would only use one. And what ends up happening is if any of them fail or if any one fails, one, uh, the other one will kick in. All right, then we have multi-address where you can have multiple uh, network cards working simultaneously. This is usually done to... Uh, segregate your networks right you have one network interface going to camera camera network where you have your cameras attached and then the other one going to your uh, internet where you can you know access the nvr the client and that sort of thing so it's usually separated that way right and some other recorders will have balance uh uh or, or uh, it's actually called Something like balance, it's, let me look here. I don't have it on this one, but, oh, load balance. So load balance, what, what it does is it'll try to balance the traffic between all the LAN ports. So it's kind of like trunking. Uh, you have uh, the ability to use multiple LAN for one connection type of thing. All right, what I usually, and then, so that that's the, the working mode. Here you can select your LANs and configure them. In this case, I'm on LAN 1, which is what's going to go to my camera network. LAN 2 will go to my uh, network for the internet. All right, so you have a couple options here. If you have a network where you're connected to a router, you can enable DHCP, and what happens is the DHCP service, which stands for uh, Dynamic Host Control Protocol, will ask the DHCP server for an IP address and all that information, so it auto-fills in all that information. If you don't have a DHCP server, that's not going to help you. It's just not going to do anything. So uh, if in case, I'm going to do it the long way, uh, kind of simulate simulating a network where there is no DHCP server what I end up doing is I use the uh, subnet uh, mask of 255.255.255 and then the f the first three octets so each each dot is considered an octet okay so the first three octets you can make that 192.168.1 okay so that's your subnet 192.168.1 and that's based on you using 255.255.255 as a subnet mask. Uh, just to confuse you guys a little more, uh, maybe if you understand this, uh, you have a little better understanding of IP. If I only use 255.255.00 as, as the subnet mask, my subnet is now 192.168.
So I can change these two octets to, you know, the range allowed, which is, you know, pretty much 0 to 255 is what you can do. Uh, in most cases, you can't use 0 or 255. So you're pretty much, your range is 1 through 254. And then, of course, you don't want to be on an IP address, uh, or a duplicate IP address. So 1 and 254 might be a router. So check that before you give your device an IP address. All right, so let's just keep it simple here. 255, 255, 255 as the subnet mask. 192.168.1 is my subnet. And this particular device, the last octet, since that's a zero, that's my device ID or device address. So in this case, I use 250 for this NVR. If I had two NVRs, the next one would be 251. And then the next one, 252, 253, 254 is the max I would go because you can't use 255. Okay. And then, of course, you need to enter a gateway if this is connecting to the internet. So the gateway might be 192.168.1.1. Or you can leave it blank if there is no gateway, meaning there's no router or way to access internet. So uh, in this case, because I'm using this for the camera network, I'm not connecting to the internet it's going to be separate so isolated from the internet lan2 might be what's connecting there so i'll put that ip address there or this the gateway okay uh the mtu size leave that default you don't need to mess with that most of the time and then the preferred dns and alternate dns server you have to enter that for other services to work such as platform access and uh, email notification type stuff. If you don't have this in there, those won't work properly. So uh, here I'm using 8.8.8.8 as my preferred, and then the alternate as 8.8.4.4. Okay, so you can use those. All right, and then in the case where I have, you know, two LAN ports, see this one I use, I, I set it up for DHCP. So what is happening here is it's not grabbing an IP address. So uh, that's that's because I'm not connected to the internet. But if I were, I would grab an IP address and I can simulate that here. Just give me one second to plug in. All right, so I have now connected a uh, the LAN port to my router. Actually, it's going to a switch then to the router uh, of my home network. So with DHCP enabled, what you would do is right-click, go to system information, go to network, and this is to verify I picked up something. So see here? LAN2 now has the IP address of 192.168.1.256. It already has the gateway entered there. And the if you notice the preferred DNS and all that, that's already there So because uh, we set it earlier. All right, so let's go back to that network settings page, which is system configuration and network. I'm going to switch over to LAN2. And you can see it's already filled out here. So it refreshed, and now I have that. So here's what you can do in most cases if you're connecting to a router. You can turn on DHCP, let it grab an IP address and that sort of thing. And then once you're done, go ahead, disable it, and click Apply. So now you have the IP address entered. It's static. And that's usually what we recommend is a static IP. Otherwise, if you change the IP address, most of your connections won't work, especially if you were using static IP addresses and that sort of thing. So uh, that's why I like to keep it static. So nothing can disconnect you based on that. So, all right, let's go back to LAN 1. Okay. LAN 1 has that IP address. And so what I would do is I would, I would, address my cameras based on the 192.168.1 uh, 
subnet right here. So if you're adding cameras, make sure they're in that subnet. You have the range of one through 254 you can use. Right now 250 is taken and there's no router on here. So dot one is actually open or 254 is open because that's usually where routers land. And so you have that whole range for cameras. If you want to have a larger range, like I said, you can bring the subnet mask down to something like this. And now you have an exponential growth of how many IP addresses you have, because I can use 250 combinations here and 250 combinations here. You know, that, that gives you a huge number of IP addresses you can use like uh, in the thousands. So uh, in most cases, this is just fine. So you can leave it at 255, 255, 255. All right. Um, and let me think what else. I think that's it, guys. So uh, if you have any questions like that, feel free to email us and, and we'll try to answer as much as possible. But uh, that's that's all we have for you today as far as adding uh, or setting up your network parameters. If you want to learn how to add cameras, please look out for that video. We have that video coming around how to add a camera to the NVR. Thank you for watching.